Hey guys, welcome back to Listography. I uh, hope everybody had a good holiday. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I've done a video, so I um, thought it would be good to get back into things here in the new year. Um, today would have been David Bowie's 72nd birthday. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get this video uploaded today or not. Uh, but in any case, um, two days from now on Thursday, uh, January 10th, that will be uh, the anniversary of his death, so uh, I figured this was a good time of year to do a David Bowie video uh, ranking all of his albums. Uh, he has uh, 27 uh, studio albums, counting uh, the two Tin Machine albums, um, and really uh, just a very, very solid um, discography, even all the way down at the very bottom of the list. Um, his worst albums um, aren't really that bad. They're just uh, maybe mediocre or average. Um, but for someone with so many albums, that's uh, saying quite a lot. At number 27 uh, is going to be the album Outside, uh, my least favorite David Bowie album. Um, this is the only David Bowie album uh, where I feel like he's trying to skate by on his name. Um, just because it's kind of a concept record um, and Brian Eno is involved and David Bowie, uh, we're just supposed to accept it as this great uh, piece of art uh, when in fact the songs really aren't there, they're not that great. Um, the production is maybe a little bit overthought um, and overblown. And uh, yeah, just not a lot here that I enjoy that much. Moving up to number 26. Uh, it's the album Earthling, which was the album that came right after Outside. Uh, so the mid-90s uh, were not a great time uh, for Bowie, in my opinion. Um, Bowie throughout his career always seemed to be uh, a step ahead of everybody else. He uh, was really um, a pioneer in a lot of ways. Uh, and Earthling is maybe uh, one of the few times, uh, maybe the only time, where he seems to be... Uh, trying to play catch up um, and latch himself on to Trent Reznor and the sort of electronic industrial type music that was happening in the 90s. Um, Earthling ends up being kind of a uh, mostly second-rate version of, of that style of music uh, apart from a few good songs, uh, Little Wonder and I'm Afraid of Americans, of course, uh, being the better tracks on the record. Number 25, Tin Machine 2. Um, really, this is just a pretty forgettable record. Nothing really bad on it. Um, nothing really that exciting. I guess my two favorite songs would be um, You Belong in Rock and Roll and Goodbye Mr. Ed. Um, but otherwise, um, just a not, not a lot here that sticks out. Number 24 uh, is going to be the first Tin Machine record, just titled Tin Machine. Um, same thing as the first or the second Tin Machine record, um, just kind of a little bit uh, forgettable. However, there are a few more tracks here that stand out to me. Uh, a couple that I really, really like a lot. Uh, the song "Amazing," uh, "Bus Stop," and "I Can't Read" are, are really good tracks. At number twenty-three, uh, the album "Tonight." Uh, this is probably Bowie's. Um, least focused record. It's kind of all over the place stylistically, um, thematically. It's just a kind of a seems a bit like a collection of b-sides and, and maybe songs he had left over from other projects. I don't know if that's the case, um, but it, it feels that way. Um, the highlights here would be um, Loving the Alien, Blue Jean, um, and I do actually enjoy uh, his cover of God Only Knows. Uh, I really like Bowie's covers, usually. Um, I think he's a very good interpreter of songs. I know a lot of people don't like um, certain covers that he's done over the years, but for the most part, I enjoy uh, his covers. Which leads me into my next selection, number 22, the album Pinups. Uh, this was sort of the, the final um, nail in the coffin to his glam period, his Ziggy Stardust uh, persona. Um, so album entirely of covers, um, not a bad record. I just have it a little lower on this list because 
Um, it feels a little less significant, not a really important part of his discography. Some of the covers are, are really good. Um, some of them uh, just sort of okay. None of them are really terrible versions. Um, my favorites, uh, I would say, are Here Comes the Night, Friday on My Mind, and Sorrow. At number 21, uh, the album is Heathen. Uh, this is one of his uh, later records. He was rejoined here by his longtime collaborator and producer, Tony Visconti. Um, it's okay. The, song, the songwriting isn't great to me, although the, the production um, is a step up from a lot of what he was doing in the 90s. Um, my favorite songs on this record, Slow Burn and Everyone Says Hi. At number 20 uh, is going to be The Next Day. Uh, this is the album that he came back with after his long hiatus following the reality record. Um, this record, uh, although I doubt this is the case, it feels like um, a lot of leftover tracks from reality uh, songs that were, maybe weren't quite uh, good enough for those sessions. Um, the production is so-so. It's, it's nothing uh, that stands out that much. Um, you know, after being off for such a long time, I kind of expected maybe a little bit more from this record. It's also a very long record. I think a few songs probably could have been uh, cut. Uh, some of the fat could have been trimmed off of this thing. Not a bad record, just all in all, um, not one of my favorites. At number 19, uh, it was going to be the album Lodger. Uh, this is considered the third uh, record in his Berlin trilogy, although I do believe a large portion of this record uh, was recorded in Switzerland. Um, it just doesn't really uh, have a lot of standout moments, although it's an okay album the whole way through. Um, my favorite songs would be Fantastic Voyage and Red Sails, although this record kind of uh, gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, sandwiched between classics like Low and Heroes and Scary Monsters. Um, it's definitely not on the, on the same level as those records, but it's, uh, it's an okay record nonetheless. At number 18 is going to be his self-titled debut album, David Bowie. Um, this is kind of a 60s pop record, um, kind of sweet uh, sort of orchestrated pop music uh, with a, a hint of Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd psychedelia thrown in, uh, some dark humor. Uh, it's actually a very good record, very underrated I think, um, and a good one to check out if, if you're not familiar uh, with, with this record. Uh, favorite songs on it are When I Live My Dream and Love You Till Tuesday. At number 17, uh, an album that a lot of Bowie fans dislike. I've seen a lot of people say this is one of his worst. Um, I actually think it's a bit underrated. Um, the album Never Let Me Down. Um, some highlights on this record are Day In, Day Out, Time Will Crawl, and Shining Star. Um, I guess uh, my biggest criticism of this record would be that it doesn't have a lot of David's uh, personality on it. It is, however, a, a pretty... Um, slick sounding 80s record with some some good um, classic songwriting on it. At number 16, uh, the album Hours. Um, this record was a step uh, back in the right direction after uh, Outside and Earthling. He gets back to more um, traditional sounding songwriting. Um, there's some really good songs on here. Um, Thursday's Child, The Pretty Things Are Going to Hell, New Angels of Promise are all really good songs. Um, overall, this is a pretty good record. And at number 15, uh, this actually, this section of my list might cause the most controversy. Um, this next selection is a record that I think most people probably would put a little bit higher on the list. Uh, and it's going to be followed by a record that I think a lot of people would put a lot lower on their list. Um, but at number 15, it's his final album, Black Star. Um, I think maybe this record is a little bit overrated because of, um, you know, the circumstances surrounding its release and David's death shortly thereafter. Um, there are some great songs on here. Um, certain moments on this record are, are among the best of his, uh, late period career. 
However, I don't think it's a, a great record the entire way through. I think there are weak spots on this record um, that people overlook a bit. Um, Black Star, Lazarus, and Dollar Days are, are great songs, um, but there are moments like uh, Sue or In a Season of Crime um, that harken back a little bit to that sort of um, techno electronic sound that he was doing on Earthling. Uh, and it just feels uh, dated. I didn't really like that style when he was doing it then, and it feels even more out of place on this record. And then at number 14, uh, I've got Black Tie, White Noise, an album um, that really is gets overlooked a lot. I think um, some people may not even be aware of it. Um, it came out in the early 90s, uh, just before Outside. Um, He's influenced a lot on this record by like early 90s R&B, electronic, and dance music. Um, and the results are, are pretty interesting, I think. Um, favorite songs on here are Black Tie, White Noise, Miracle, Good Night, uh, Don't Let Me Down and Down is fantastic. And his cover of I Know It's Gonna Happen Someday is uh, phenomenal. His vocal performance on there is, is fantastic. So yeah, I really like that record. I think it's very solid and underrated. At number 13, I have his sophomore album, Space Oddity. Um, a pretty big step forward here uh, following his debut. Um, he gets into uh, a little bit more complex subject matter on this record and, and longer um, song structures that are kind of, um, kind of less traditional. Uh, my favorite songs on here are the title track, Space Oddity, and Memory of a Free Festival. At number 12, the album Heroes, uh, the middle album of the Berlin Trilogy. Um, love the songs Heroes and Sons of the Silent Age. Um, the things that keep this record out of the top 10 for me uh, would be that uh, compared to Low, it's a bit more dense, um, more layered, a little more difficult to get into. Um, and especially on the instrumental side, it's a, it's a bit more ambient and um, less groove driven. Um, so that holds it back for me a little bit, but it's a, a great record nonetheless. At number 11, I've got another record that I feel is highly underrated in his catalog. My favorite of all of his uh, later albums and that would be Reality. Um, a lot of great songs on this record. Um, New Killer Star, his cover of Pablo Picasso is fantastic. Looking for Water, Fall, Fall Dog Bombs the Moon is great. Um, really, I love every song on this record. Um, I think the songwriting is sort of simple and direct and really, really strong. Uh, same goes for the production. Um, he's not trying to do too much um, like he would do, was doing on some of his other albums in the 90s. I just really, really like this record. All right, and now we're into the top 10. Uh, we've got at number 10, Young Americans, uh, one of his Plastic Soul records. Um, a lot of really good standout tracks on this record. Young Americans, Win, uh, Can You Hear Me, Fame, of course, was a big hit. And I also really love his cover of Across the Universe. Uh, again, I think it's another great vocal performance uh, and a great interpretation of a song that he didn't write. At number nine, I have The Man Who Sold the World. Um, this was his third album, one of his only forays into kind of um, hard rock, at least during that early period in his career. Um, following this, he would go into a somewhat more folky and glam direction. Um, but Mick Ronson really shines on this record. This is maybe the highlight of Mick Ronson's career as a guitarist. Um, some, some great songs on here, Width of a Circle, Black Country Rock, and of course, The Man Who Sold the World. At number eight, I have the album Low, uh, the first of the Berlin records. Um, a little funkier, a little groovier than Heroes. Um, the songs are a little catchier, and uh, for me, that, that puts it uh, ahead of the other Berlin records. Um, sound and Vision, Always Crashing in the Same Car, Be My Wife, A New Career in a Nuke Town um, are some of my favorite tracks on the record. At number seven, the album Diamond Dogs. Um, this is the first record without his Spiders from Mars backing him up. 
Um, it's a dark record, uh, kind of mysterious. Um, songs are a little um, less immediate than on some of his previous records. They're not quite as catchy, uh, apart from the um, undeniable hook. Uh, guitar riff on Rebel Rebel. Uh, this can be a little bit of a difficult record, uh, but it's very, very strong uh, once you get into it. Diamond Dogs, Rock and Roll With Me, We Are The Dead, and Rebel Rebel, of course, uh, being my favorite tracks on the record. At number six, uh, the album Let's Dance. Um, one of the big uh, commercial successes of Bowie's career. Um, a lot of hits on this record, Modern Love, China Girl, um, the title track, of course, uh, the produ production on this record is immaculate. Um, you've got Stevie Ray Vaughan playing lead guitar, um, putting some, some great blues licks uh, all throughout the record. Uh, and the lesser known tracks are fantastic as well. It's just a really, really good uh, pop record. At number five, I have Scary Monsters. Um, this is coming right after his Berlin period where he was experimenting and doing a lot of different things. Uh, really pushing the envelope, and he takes all, all those ideas and things that he learned and turns them into great pop songs on this record. Um, really, really um, great record. Up the Hill Backwards, Teenage Wildlife, m might be my favorite David Bowie song, at least at the moment. Uh, fashion is great, Ashes to Ashes, um, just a, a great record. At number four, it's Hunky Dory, um, just loaded with classic songs on this record. Um, Changes, Life on Mars, Queen Bitch, Quicksand. Um, it's out of the, kept out of the top three, um, just for a few weaker tracks on here, like Andy Warhol, Song for Bob Dylan. Um, but overall, this album is, is a uh, must listen. At number three, I have Aladdin Sane. Um, this is probably the glammiest of his glam albums. Uh, really kind of over-the-top uh, stuff here, but it's also kind of a dark record as well, um, sort of a dark undercurrent. Uh, I love songs like Watch That Man, Aladdin Sane, Drive-In Saturday, and The Gene Genie. At number two, uh, I've got Station to Station. Um, this is the first of, of two albums of his that I think are, are perfect tens. Um, everything on it is great. Um, Station to Station, Golden Years, Word on a Wing, uh, TVC15. Uh, the record really does not have a weak moment. And at number one, of course, I uh, gotta go with the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Um, just one of the best rock and roll records ever made. Uh, every song is perfect. Um, the production is great. Um, five Years, Soul Love, Rock and Roll Suicide, Moon Age, Daydream, on and on, uh, just loaded with, with classics. Just a, a great all-time classic record. And that does it uh, for my Bowie list. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, of course, uh, this would be one of my lists that, that um, changes the most, uh, always revising and uh, tinkering with these as I listen to them. Um, but really with Bowie, you can, you can put them in just about any order and make a solid argument. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hit like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, check us out on Facebook as well. Uh, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.